Does anybody know how many weapons we can actually account for that we sent to Ukraine that actually made it to Ukraine and not say stolen on the black market or to Russia? Sources description box below, by the way, for those of you who have not seen my videos before. Okay. Let me start from the top. I'm going to paraphrase a lot of different articles just for the sake of time. And I think, frankly, you guys are going to get bored with it. So long story short, intelligence officials, of course, are always anonymized here, but there's multiple articles. I'll read everything, so on and so forth. Allegedly, according to these intelligence officials, the United States has no idea about how many weapons actually arrived to Ukraine that we had sent. It was considered to be the weapons that we are able to account for a drop in the total bucket. Now, the Washington Post decided to look a little bit farther into this and determined that high-risk weapons, whatever that means, however they decide to define that, there's only 10% of total weapons that they're actually able to account for. Now, I can actually give you a much more accurate estimation based off of how many we can consider internationally and also how many we were able to account for in previous U.S. operations and get a general estimate. Why do I know this? Because I studied congressional oversight during my master's program that I had just finished. And so we had to do things like regression analyses, et cetera, et cetera, tracking weapons. How many weapons can we actually find versus how many are out there based on serial codes? Blah, 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 blah. You get the point, right? Great. Before I give that, I want to give you guys a perspective on the depth that we're talking here. So we have sent Ukraine $76.8 billion in total, like humanitarian assistance, security assistance, et cetera. $76.8 billion. That is more then the military budgets of the United Kingdom, Germany, France, and many other countries, but I'm not going to go into that, such as South Korea, Japan, Ukraine itself, Italy, Australia, Canada, Israel, blah, 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 blah. You get the point. Okay, cool. I'm trying to speed through this so you give you guys just the facts that you need to know. If we were to do a military versus military comparison, the U.S. had sent $46.6 billion in military aid specifically to Ukraine. Okay, keep that in mind. $46.6 billion. France's total military budget is $53.6 So we're getting closer to France's military budget in just military aid alone. Oh my God. All right, so how many of these can we actually account for? Well, the high-risk weapons, 10%, that's probably about the total amount that we're actually able to find with all the weapons. In Afghanistan, it went to the Taliban. In Iraq, a lot of times it went to ISIS eventually. Where do you think this is going to go to in Ukraine? Where do you think those weapons are going to go to? What is the likelihood that there is going to be a future engagement somewhere where U.S. or NATO troops are going to be unalived by the, their own weapons? How about this? Flint, Michigan doesn't have water yet. Look at all the drug epidemics going on in the U.S., Look at the infrastructure that's failing. Look at the healthcare crises and all these other things. Could we have used maybe 90% of that budget for things back home? And here's the thing. If you're pro-Ukraine, you would care about whether or not this aid went to Ukrainians themselves. If you don't like Ukraine, then you would care about how much was wasted so you could bring it all back home. If you kind of care about Ukraine, you know, maybe about as much as the Europeans themselves, you'd probably fall somewhere in between. Regardless, you would be interested in understanding what happened to all of this stuff. Now, what do we do? What is the policy solution? Well, it's actually a lot more simple than one might think. It's just people are incompetent and corrupt, so they just don't figure these things out, either intentionally or otherwise. So you need something called a Special Inspector General for Ukraine Assistance. SIGWA is what it is called. It is a bill that creates a Special Inspector General to look specifically into this. So essentially they draft reports and they understand what happens to all this aid so we can either change policy in the future or stop policy that we're doing right now. This happened in Afghanistan, seven years too late. It was called SIGAR, Special Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction. Most of the things that we understand about Afghanistan, the Afghanistan war was created from SIGAR. There is the Special Inspector General for Iraq Reconstruction as well. That's how we learned a lot about what's going on in Iraq. We need that for Ukraine. We don't have that. We do not have that. We just got out of Afghanistan and we still don't understand. Maybe that's something that we could also do in Ukraine. As a matter of fact, that's already been SIGWA. That's already been proposed. And I think it's going to not pass because people are corrupt. But it's a good thing that the American people have an understanding. This is a policy that is not rocket science. 
the weapons manufacturing contracting companies that benefit, that might be a little bit more towards rocket science, but the average American, we don't need to know that stuff. We just need to know what the solution is. This is the solution.